Hey guys, this is a quick screencast to show you how we're going to take our PHP application that we've written to manage our tasks and convert it over to an application that instead of reading a MariaDB uh, database directly on our web server to reading a DynamoDB table on Amazon Web Services. So the first thing we want to do is decide where we're going to put this application. So right now I've got my task list installed in the root directory of the web server. So I'm going to add something to the effect of php-dynamodb. That's where I want to put my web application. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my command prompt. And here I'm already in the var www.html folder. So I'm going to make a directory for PHP DynamoDB. I'll change to that directory. And this is where I'm going to place my files. So I've already got a couple of files open right here. One is the composer JSON, which is what we're going to use to actually install the Amazon Web Services Software Development Kit, or the AWS SDK. This is what's going to allow us to natively read and write data to a DynamoDB database. So I'm going to just grab a copy of this JSON snippet right here. I'm going to go back to my command prompt, and I'm going to use nano to create a composer.json file. Inside that composer.json file, I'm going to paste the information that was in this JSON file. And it sort of messed it up a little bit when I pasted it, but that's OK. I can clean it up with just a few keystrokes. And it doesn't really matter. It's JSON data, so uh, white space isn't important. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is now that I've got that text in the file, I'm going to control O to write it out and control X to exit. Now, I've got a composer.json file, but I don't currently have composer installed. Now, when we install composer, what it's going to do is it's going to copy some PHP files down from the web directly onto our computer in this folder we're in. And then it's, we're going to run a command that's actually going to install and set up Composer. And I've actually got it in my command history. So I'm going to use the wget command to I'm going to use the wget command to pull down this installer script, which is written in PHP. So I run that. It saves it. And now I have both my Composer.json and an installer script. And if I run PHP installer, it actually runs and installs the PHP composer file that we need. Now it says to use it, just run php composer.phar, which is a PHP archive. So we'll run that php composer.far. And we're going to install. And what's going to happen is it's going to read this composer.json file that we created. And it's going to install everything it needs in support of what we've asked for in the composer.json file. So the composer.json file wants the AWS SDK downloaded. So it does that, and it downloads all the dependencies that the AWS SDK has defined for it. So it's an easy way to get everything downloaded. And you'll see it has this vendor file, vendor folder that was created. It also creates a lock file to indicate that it's done the work already for us. OK, now that we've got all the vendor libraries that we need, we're going to go to our WinSCP session. And we're going to go to the new folder I've created, PHP DynamoDB. And I've got that index file, which I'm going to then upload. So now we have the composer file. We have the vendor folder. We have our index.php. And 
if we take a look at that index.php, you'll see that there are some changes that were made from the example I gave you. One is I moved my credentials out to a credentials file. That way I would not be embedding my access key and secret key into it. Um, also, it has the region that we're running in. So some of you may be in Ohio, which is US East-2, I believe. Uh, North Virginia is in US East-1. And then those get passed in as the credentials when we create the DynamoDB client. I've also added a large amount of output just to demonstrate how to output data from the array of tasks that are returned. And I gave a set of instructions that say down here at the bottom is where you add the HTML. And you need to use the code above as an example. But then you need to remove that code when you're done. So basically, the existing, PHP, I mean, the existing HTML code goes here. And it replaces lines 67 through 83. Now, the one thing we didn't talk about was where this access key and secret key come from. So before we can actually run the application, we're going to have to go generate an access key and a secret key, create a credentials.php file, put this text inside it, and replace access key and secret key with the actual values from Amazon. So let's see how to do that. So if I switch back over to Amazon and I go to the IAM or IAM services, I'm able to create an actual user and uh, a group that is allowed to read and write DynamoDB data. So we'll start by going to groups. We'll create a new group. We'll call it DynamoDB. go to the next step and under policies we'll put in a filter of DYN and it shows us we have uh, several options we can give them full access we can give them read-only access and at the moment I think we only need read-only access so we'll check that off we'll go to the next step and it says please review your policies and then we're going to create this group now we've got a DynamoDB group now we need to create a user to go into that group. So we click on users, we add a new user, and I'm going to call him DDB user for DynamoDB. I'm going to give them programmatic access, which allows us to define an access key and a secret key that we can use with it. So no one's actually going to log in with this user. Next, we'll go to permissions and we'll check off the DynamoDB group. That means they'll have access to read DynamoDB data. Next, we'll click to tags. We don't need to add any tags. We'll click review and everything looks good. We're gonna create the user. Now, the last thing you're able to do is look at this access key and secret key that you're going to put into your code. So in this example, I could copy my access key and don't worry, these access keys will be deleted as soon as I'm done with this video. And then I could come back to my credentials.php file, which I'm going to create in another file. And I'm going to paste that access key in there. I'm going to show this access key and copy it. And paste it over the secret key that we have here. And this really just needs to go into its own credentials.php file. So jumping back over to WinSCP, I can create a new file, credentials.php, click OK, paste that data in there, save it. It gets uploaded back to the server. Now we should have everything we need. I'll go back here and close this out. I've got my user. I've got my code set up. Let's go see what it actually looks like. So we're going to go to the website. We put it in the PHP-DynamoDB folder. So we hit enter and it loads the data for us there. 
and that's all you need to do.